Hi, everybody. Um, so as Greg said, <coughs> we, um, and those of you who are on the mailing list may have seen this. So uh, a number of weeks ago, I sent out a survey to poll the community for basically feedback around usability um, and other aspects. So j a little bit of background to this is that um, I've been, for the, at the end of the last number of releases, I've chaired or tried to chair uh, retrospective calls just to understand how the releases have gone, get some feedback from the community, et cetera. Um, but what we were finding was we weren't getting the information that we needed from those, or from the, from those community retrospectives. So we decided we'll, 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 we'll try to, to gather some feedback through the means of a survey. So this was the first community-wide mailing list survey that was conducted. Um, the survey opened July 28th uh, and closed August 4th, so it's only about a week old. The, the information that you're seeing here. Um, there was 34 questions in that. Um, several of those were multi-select, and that's important uh, when you see some of the results, because it, not all the answers add up to, or not all the uh, responses add up to 100%. So just bear that in mind when you're seeing the results. Um, there were four main sections to the survey. There was the usage, the roadmap and performance, submissions and support, and tools and documentation. And what we were trying to get a feel for from the community was in what areas did we need to improve on, what could we do for future releases, et cetera. So the main participants um, of the survey were the DPDK developers, so the dev list, the users list, the announce list. Um, we got 149 people participating. It's good, probably exceeded our initial expectation, but we'd like to see more. So if you look at who's registered for this conference, there were over 300 people. Um, so one request I would have is that when these type of requests come out in future, please do respond. We're trying to gather this information for future use. Um, one important point, and we had an 85% completion rate, but one important point to note as well is that 40% of the, of the participants say that they contributed patches in a recent release. And by recent here, we mean since DVDK 2.1 back in August uh, of 2015, okay? But so when you're looking at the results, bear in mind that we can make an assumption that 60% of the people who responded are consumers or users of DPDK, okay? Um, okay, so what I'll run through is just a summary of the results. Um, I'll go into a little bit of detail around those results itself. Um, we'll we'll go through some key takeaways and then the next steps, what we're gonna do with the data. Um, okay, so we'll start with the good. Um, so I guess one, the very final question on the, on the survey that we sent out was basically, does DPDK meet your requirements? Um, it was a yes, no answer. Uh, and basically the response we got was that 96% of the participants said that DPDK was meeting their requirements. The caveat there obviously is that they probably wouldn't be using DPDK if it didn't meet their requirements, right? But nonetheless, they were given the opportunity and that's what they came back with. The next one was the roadmap communication. So we've done a lot of work recently to try and get the information around our roadmaps out earlier and um, with a bit more detail. And the feedback from the community was that's positive. Um, one request I'd have to other contributors to the community is that to also publish their roadmaps in advance so that there's not duplication of work. We've seen examples even recently where two companies or two contributors are working on the same thing. If that could be released in advance, that would obviously remove that duplication. Um, the patch submissions process, it's interesting based on the conversation that, that happened uh, yesterday evening, you know, the, the feedback from that panel discussion was the patch submission process was broken, but actually 75% of the people who responded to the survey actually thought it was working quite well. There's 25% who didn't, and what I'll do in the later slide is go into some details around how, some improvements that were suggested for that. Um, the release cadence, so we asked in the survey, DBDK is moving to four releases per year in 2017. And one of the questions we asked was, is this the right release cadence? Um, over 60% of the people who responded said they felt it was, um, but 30% of the people who responded said that maybe it's too many. So I think there's still a little bit of an open debate there around whether we have too many releases per year. But based on the feedback we've seen so far, it seems to be about right. And then the last piece on the good is the engaged community. And what I mean by this is the level, so normally, and the danger with sending out surveys is that people just fill in the checkbox, send it back, hopefully send it back, 
um, and don't fill in any of the comment sections. The interesting piece with this is that for almost all of the questions which we asked for real and tangible feedback, we got it. There's a lot of information. I'm not going to be able to go through all of it here. And actually, a lot of the valuable information is contained within the actual comments that we receive from the community. So what I will be doing, though, is, and it, it'll be in the, in the last slide, is I'm going to be uh, sending out the results of this to the open source community. I'll include all the comments in there so that you can see the type of feedback that's coming in from the community. But the, it, for me, what it pointed to was the level of engagement that the community has and the level of interest that the community has. So that's the good, that's the good stuff. Um, the improvements, these, these have come up through the course of these presentations, I think, throughout the last two days. The number one that came in was the need for release support. Um, the need for either stable releases, LTS, or preferably both. Um, and we'll touch on it. We've started making some progress on this, as John touched on it earlier on, around the 1607 being a stable release. But there's definitely a desire from the community to ensure that we have release support. The, the next section was around documentation. So 55% of the people thought the documentation was good or excellent. But that means that 45% of the people thought there was some improvements that we could make to documentation. Um, some of the feedback that came in was just around the, that the documentation was outdated, for example. Um, and I think that there's, uh, there's an interesting stat, which we'll come to later on, around the people who are contributing documentation to the releases. And there's definitely more that I think we as a community can do in order to educate and bring other people who might be new to the community, educate them in terms of what they need to do to engage with the community. Um, the next one was around no specific hotspots, but performance bottlenecks seen in certain areas. So what we mean here is that one of the questions was, um, if, have you observed performance bottlenecks in DPDK? And about 30% of the people who responded said that they had. And they identified, we asked them to identify where specifically they'd seen those bottlenecks. Um, and they did. Uh, so on the positive side, there wasn't any one area in which you know, was a, a performance bottleneck. But as you'll see in a later slide, uh, there were a number of different, it was very disparate in terms of the various different performance bottleneck areas that were identified. We've tried to group them into some logical order for the purposes of the presentation. But certainly when I send out the more, the full set of results, then uh, uh, you'll be able to see, I guess, the, 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 the details around that. And then the last one on the improvements was, and this came up again yesterday, was the need for a continuous integration and test environment. Um, again, within the comments there, there was a lot of comments around uh, modeling it off the way in which FIDO run their CSIT today. Um, and 75% of the people who responded to the survey believe that this is a need and that's something we should be doing for DPDK. Um, so there the, that's just the executive summary. I'll go into a little bit of detail here in terms of graphs. I'm not going to, I won't go through every, everyone maybe, but here's just a snapshot of some of the questions that we asked as part of the survey, right? So the first one was around uh, usage. Um, so what you can see in the, on the graph on the left-hand side, or yeah, left-hand side as you're looking, is uh, that DBDK 16.04 is the most used release. Um, f uh, we have a number of people still on 2.2. I guess the takeaway from this one, though, is the number of, of respondents to the survey who are still using 1.8 or earlier, which is, which is a considerable number. Um, when we asked why, uh, why you weren't upgrading to a future release, the reason, main reason cited was lack of stability. Um, in terms of where DPDK is most widely used, again, we asked people to select um, where, in which, in, in where, where they're using DPDK. Not surprisingly, most are using a network compliance followed by cloud and enterprise. You can see the breakdown of the percentages there. We also wanted to get a, a feel from the community as to whether they're using DPDK with virtualization, what type of virtualization, containers, et cetera. So 70% of the people who responded to the survey are using DPDK with virtualization and containers. And then within that virtualization number, that was split evenly between SRIOV and vhost and vertio. So the next one is in was a continuation of, of usage, but in a bit kind of more detail or a bit breakdown. So the most commonly used parts were the Pulmo drivers, DAL, Vertio, Vhost, et cetera. Um, and you can see a list of the most commonly used PMDs on the right-hand side. 
Um, we also ask what CPU architecture you're using. Um, the top three are provided there on the left-hand side, which is uh, x86, ARMv8, and Power8. And then we also were curious to know around what are the other open source projects that you're using with DPDK. And the top three that came back from the survey were Open vSwitch, OpenStack, and Hyperscan. So if we talk about roadmap, Ten mentioned this yesterday in his talk um, around feedback on roadmap. And it's, it's one of the positive areas that we've tried to work on, but I think there's still more we can do here. Um, so almost 70% of the people are aware of the DBDK roadmap. Uh, I, we might even do a, sh a show of hands. To, are people aware that there's a roadmap published out on dpdk.org? Show of hands. OK, generally speaking. OK, that's good. Um, over 80% of the people believe it was communicated around the right time. So what we've tried to do from an Intel perspective is publish our roadmap, an initial roadmap, six months in advance of the release. And then four months before the release, we'll tighten up that and uh, try to confirm exactly what features are going to make it into that release. And almost 70% of the people are satisfied with the level of detail that's provided on that roadmap. Um, again, as I mentioned in the executive summary, we asked around DBDK will have four releases in 2017, and almost 70% who responded believe that this was the, release, uh, the right release cadence. But I guess we'll have to go through and, and, and kind of go through the process to understand whether that's still the, ca uh, is, is still the case. Um, and then in terms of roadmap items of, for areas of DPDK that need to be improved, um, you can see a, a kind of a list here on the left-hand side as to the ones in which people thought, felt that needed to be improved the most. But I guess of more interest was the level of feedback that we got in the comments around the top other areas that were mentioned for the DPDK roadmap. And that's basically the roll-up of what I mentioned in the executive summary, which was the need for greater release support, that the documentation needed to be updated, um, that there need to be more transparent and visible testing. And going back to my point earlier on around the continuous test uh, system and integration test environment. Interestingly, KNI was the next uh, topic in terms of improvement areas. Um, and then lastly was uh, memory. So there were the five kind of areas that jumped out of it from the survey. So we asked questions around performance. Not surprisingly, 75% of the people who came back rated performance as being very important to them. Um, so, um, but again, as I mentioned earlier, 30% pointed out possible bottlenecks in, P in DPDK. So what we tried to do was group these into certain areas. Uh, we didn't do a very good job because the other is the biggest, uh, is the biggest piece in the chart. Um, but if we look at the more specific, so there was a lot of feedback around potential performance bottlenecks in the PMDs. Um, in particular, an I40E. Um, packet distributor was another one that jumped out from the survey in terms of the need for maybe some work and some performance bottlenecks. Um, KNI and MBuff, MBuff sorry, were, the, were the other two that jumped from the survey. Um, the submissions process, uh, so almost 40%, as I mentioned at the beginning, had contributed to a recent release since 2.1 about a year ago. Um, and of those, three quarters of them said that they were satisfied with the patch submission process. But of the 25% who came back and said that they weren't, we broke their feedback down into three areas. Um, the first area was, um, I'll, I'll, I'll kind of start with, with the how-to guide. So what we got a lot of feedback from the community on was that they didn't know where to start. They didn't know how to contribute a patch to the community. Um, and John went through material earlier on. Um, maybe we need to be advertising that. Uh, we got some questions from the audience around this as well. So there is still a number of people there who uh, need to be educated in terms of how they contribute to the community. The next big section is around or the, the patch review process. So this has come up a few times through the course of the last two days. And that is the length of time it takes to get your patches applied or even reviewed. Um, and it can be frustrating. Um, there's also been some feedback, and I'll be honest here, that there is, uh, particularly for people who contribute to the uh, community for the first time or don't have a history in the community, that their patches are often left sitting there not reviewed. Um, I guess to John's point at the end of his last presentation, one of the requests we'd have is that, you know, that as a community, we should be actively reviewing patches. 
right? and ensuring that there, there's no delays in these patches. Um, I think Hamant earlier in one of the presentations yesterday mentioned and he showed examples where he has patches sitting out in the community unreviewed for a, no, for a, for a, for a, um, a number of releases. And then lastly, it was tools. So tools was the hot, hot topic as well yesterday around. And again, specifically, the two tools that were mentioned repeatedly in terms of the feedback were the use of Garrett and GitHub. Um, certainly from a, from a Garrett perspective, I think it's probably something that we need to be looking at as a community. Um, and that's something that we'll, uh, I think it was mentioned yesterday as well, that we, it's, it is something that we're going to consider. So I mentioned that release support was important. So on, in that vein, we had asked kind of three questions. Um, one was to rate the importance of long-term support. We just gave a two years as an example. Um, and what I've done here is just basically grouped you know, important and very important into two and just given the, a roll-up of the view, right? So over 60% you know, of the people believe that it was important or very important. Um, again, we asked the importance of having a stable release with backported fixes for each release cycle. Interestingly, that was a little bit higher. Um, but again, still a strong desire for to have that in the community. And as John mentioned, we're going to start with that in 1607. And then the last one was just the importance of ABI compatibility. So it's a slightly disconnected from the other feedback, but it is a lower percentage of feedback from the community in terms of the importance of ABI compatibility. Not sure what to read into that, but. Um, so on the testing and on the, on the test side, there, there was a, an interesting, so if we remember that 40% of the people who responded were contributors. Um, but only 18% of those who responded said that they actually use, uh, run the DPDK unit test framework. Um, and less than 10% have added to it. Uh, so there's either an issue there or something that we need to look at. Either it's not working or people don't know about it. Um, but they're very low numbers. Um, and then 36% are aware of the automated test suite, but only 40% have plans to use it in the future. So again, there's been a level of investment in these tools over time. Um, and I guess what this data is pointing to is whether that level of investment is justified. Um, and again, as I mentioned earlier, the importance of having a continuous integration and test environment, uh, it was overwhelmingly 75% three quarters of the people who responded stated that we should. And I think that's, that's, that's definitely an area that we're probably going to look into. So from a documentation perspective, uh, so I mentioned that 40% of the people uh, were contributors. Um, but 85% of the, the participants who answered this question said that they had not contributed any documentation to EPDK. So 15% of the people who responded had been contributing docu documentation. Um, that's, as a community, it's probably something we should be improving on. Because if you look at the next level in terms of the quality of the DPDK documentation, again, as I mentioned at the beginning, 55% of the people thought it was quite good. But I'm kind of assuming everything left of that is, is a negative. Um, if you look at the bottom, there's, I have a graph on the right hand side that just kind of summarizes which documents are most popular based on the responses that were received. You can see those there. But I guess what I want to touch on here is the main improvement suggestions. So, one was the removal of outdated information, particularly from the programmer's guide. Two was a way to go back in version history. And this, uh, for example, the API documentation for previous versions. Um, three was a more detailed information on the PMDs and performance tuning. And four was DPDK for dummies. So again, as we have new people joining the community, there was uh, a desire, I guess, and a number of people comments came through in terms of adding more high-level overview diagrams, for example, just to explain DPDK, give people the context of what it does. So I, I mentioned this earlier. This was the last question on it. Uh, you know, so you know, I, I think, to be fair, I mean, we have to take the pot. It, it's a very positive response, right? Um, and you know, it, it's good to see, and it's good to see that the community is engaged. So. They're the kind of key takeaways, but I guess I just wanted to kind of have a poll around the room. Firstly, were you aware of the survey? Well, firstly, show of hands maybe. Who, did anyone in the room respond to that survey, provide input to it? 
Okay, we have a few. Okay, um, and then a general question is: any kind of comments on whether the results or the what we've shown here resonates in terms of the desire for release support, improved documentation, continuous system integration test? That that's what you know. 150 people responded to the survey are telling us, but that they're only a small percentage of the overall population of the community. So, is there any feedback on that? Any thoughts? Do people agree? Or, yeah. Yeah. Uh, one, of, one of the things there was that we should have previous versions of the documentation, the API, yeah. Yeah. API documentation. Yeah. That's actually there. Oh, it is there? We okay. do have it. Okay. But if people don't know it's there, then it's that's also okay. bad. Yeah. 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 Um, from memory, uh, on the first page of the documentation, towards the end, and it's not a long page, it says previous versions. And if you go in there, you have previous versions of the user guides and the API uh, documentation. So any thoughts? Just generally? OK. So I think the first day, um, it was said that in the survey, uh, there was a question about features to add to the DPDK. Yeah. Uh, I, ha I think I, uh, I think it's in here. Uh, but the I think one of that was eBPF, and I can't see that. Maybe I'm wrong. Sorry. One of which is sorry. eBPF support in DPDK. Yeah. So, so I've rolled up. So I've rolled up. So there's there's lots of different areas. I've rolled all of the information up to the general areas that were that were for improvement. I saw the comment on on that. Uh, it was the only one. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, now we know. But but so it, this is just a. a, a I, I tried to have, a, um, aggregate it up. Yeah. Uh, but when you see the full results, it, I'm going to send out the full results, and you'll see the full list of the of areas that need to be improved. Yeah. Another question here or a comment? I'm one of the 15 person who is still on 1.7, and the documentation just goes to 1.8. Okay. okay. Just a comment. Yeah. yeah. I, I recommend that you upgrade get new documentation. <laughs> <laughs> Next steps, as I mentioned, I'm going to collate and release these re results out to the open source community. Um, I likely hold a community call. Um, if anybody wants to participate in that, join that call, get engaged with the discussion, great, please do. The details of that community call will be sent out to the various different mailing lists. Um, there is a DBDK user space event on, in Dublin in October, which is primarily aimed at the development community themselves. And what I would like to do is take some of the feedback, the, the more specific feedback that we've received in the survey into that session for discussion. Um, and then just a couple of help needs. One is to sign up to one of the mailing lists, either to the, if you're not there already, um, to the dev, to the users, or to the announce list. Um, the reason I'm saying that is that we want to get your input. Um, I'm going to be engaging with the, with the community again in the next six months, and my request is to respond. Provide your input, provide your feedback. If we don't get it, we won't know about it. So what we want to do is be open and transparent with the feedback we're getting, and then also be open and transparent with what we're going to do with it. Um, and that's the legal stuff. So that's, that's it. Any comments, questions? Okay, thanks very much.